Hello, hello, and welcome to Self Care is Sexy. My name is Chris, and I'll be your host. We're a podcast that's here to generate and share self care ideas with each other. Our last episode was a self care assessment where I designed some really great questions to get you thinking about your own self care and what might be getting in the way. I really hope that you took the time to go through those questions and answer them honestly. There's a lot of great information to be found in your own work. If you missed that show or need to catch up on any past episodes, you can find the show on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podbean, iHeartRadio, and really anywhere else you get your podcasts from. I want to give you a quick preview of what to expect from today's show. Today, I've got 10 easy ways that you can love yourself better today without having to buy anything, without having to read anything, or really put too much effort into it. I've got some really amazing life hacks that are going to help you build a better loving relationship with yourself and really start to see yourself differently through the self-love and the self-care. But first, a few quick housekeeping notes. All right, so for today, I've got 10 ways to love yourself that don't include having to buy a bunch of shit or go run a bunch of errands or rack up a bunch of debt. These are actual practical ways that you can use to love yourself better because a lot of us have actually never been taught how to love ourselves and probably exactly the opposite. We've probably learned some pretty negative and disruptive patterns on how to hate on ourselves, how to beat ourselves up, and really how to grind ourselves into the ground for other people and other people's needs. So what happens when we're stuck in those patterns and we want to change, but we just don't know how? You know, we can't see ourselves out of it. We don't know which way to go. We feel like, you know, something's wrong and, and we need to fix it, but we just really don't know what to do. Well, it's really important that first of all, you give yourself some grace. If you've never really been taught how to love yourself, if the idea of learning to love yourself is uncomfortable and seems foreign to you, I first want to just say that's okay. It's okay if that's where you find yourself. And and today is about not doing anything really drastic or really you know, going way beyond your comfort zone. Today is just about how can you really make positive changes, easy, tangible, positive changes, and learn to love yourself better. And like I said, I just don't think enough of us were actually given this curriculum or taught how to do this. And if you're wondering where any of these ideas came from or how I compiled this information, Um, These 10 ways to love yourself come from three different sources. One is from traditional talk therapy with a therapist. One is from um, interviewing other members of our community from all different walks of life about how they love themselves. And of course, the countless amounts of books from Hay House to podcasts, all of the things that I do to feed myself the information. I'm compiling it into what my partner likes to call the Chris notes. I'm going to make it easy and simple and tangible so that you can walk away from today's show with at least one thing that you can do to love yourself better. Number one, the most important thing you can do to love yourself better is to get your basics on lock. And what I mean by that is you need to get your sleep, your water, and your boundaries in check no matter what first. Those are the top three answers people give when I ask, what do you do for self-care? The number one answer is sleep. Take a nap. Make sure you're getting at least seven hours, even if you have to lay there bored to death thinking about how much you wish you could go to sleep just resting your body. 
If you're having a hard time with sleep, there's a bunch of different things you can do. I'll tell you right now, I use this stuff called Calm. It's called Natural Calm. It's a magnesium add-in to water, but be careful, my pals, because this stuff, if you take too much of it, you will be very groggy. It's very hard to get out of bed, so be very, very sparing with it. But if you have a hard time going to sleep, staying asleep, insomnia is your friend, issues, problems, whatever with sleep, natural calm. They've got it in a bunch of different flavors. You can find it on Amazon. My website has a link to all of my self-care faves if you want to check it out there as well. But you've got to get the basics on lock. You've got to get your sleep in, you've got to get your water in, and you've got to set your boundaries. Now, if you're new to boundary setting and you're like, what the F do I do to set boundaries? Where do I set boundaries? Who do I set boundaries with? I've got several podcasts. Go ahead and search the archive. I talk about boundaries more than anything else on this podcast. So you can check those out. Number two in my top 10 ways to love yourself. Number two, you're going to take responsibility for your experiences. Now, what I'm saying by this is that it's time to kind of switch your thinking around from all the things that are happening to you to look at how you're creating what's happening to you. So instead of everything outside of you being responsible for your life, your experiences, where you're at right now, whatever's going on with you, it's time to start looking at what part of this am I contributing to. And this is so important for self-care. Hear me out. This is one of the biggest life hacks that if you can get this down, it will unfold miraculous things in your life which is just being able to look at a situation and saying, all right, realistically, this is what I'm responsible for, and realistically, this is what they're responsible for. And when I say they're, I don't mean specifically a person, although you can work it that way too, but you can be like the thing outside of me that I have no control over. Now, if we want to go to the very, very beginning, the very, very basics, you do have to accept the fact that there are things that you cannot control, right? You can't control the weather. You can't control who's going to show up for you or not. You can't control, you know, your health. A lot of times that's out of your control. There are things you can do, yes, but sometimes there are things that are out of your control. So you really want to first start looking at what you have control over, what you don't have control over, and then accurately assessing what is your responsibility and what is not. And how this really ties into self-care is that a lot of us that struggle with self-care don't know what is our responsibility and what is not. We very often assign ourselves way more blame. Number three, Another way to love yourself without having to buy anything, without having to do anything, without really having to make any fucking effort at all, is I want you to adopt some kind of breathing exercise. I have had multiple people on this podcast, including nurses, doctors, therapists, all walks of life, talk about how important breathing is. Sounds pretty routine, right? You do it every day, in and out. And there are all different kinds of techniques. There's the box breathing technique. There's yogic breathing. There's classic meditation breathing on insight timer apps, calm apps, mindfulness apps, 10% happier. Whatever you need to do to, to get yourself into a mindful practice of breathing, it is imperative that you have a a breathing practice that you use because it will help to generate self-love. Try it with me right now. As long as you're not driving or doing anything dangerous, go ahead and put your hand over your heart. Take a few deep breaths in. Go ahead and blow it all out. Blow it all out. And say, I love you just the way you are. And do that as needed, three, four, five times a day if you need. It's a very simplistic way to just reaffirm that you do love yourself. Number four, replace should with could. So should is not a very loving concept. And I say it all the time, don't should on yourself. Don't. Don't do that thing where you say there's all this stuff you should be doing. No. 
we are going to collectively agree, of course, after all this horseshit we've been through over the last year and a half, two years, we're not going to keep track of and have this unrealistic list of the things that we should be doing. You know, because that list is based on what? It's based on people outside of us. It's based on our comparisons. It's based on something somebody said to us once that stuck with us forever about how shitty we are because we're not doing a thing that we should be doing. So I really want you to work on catching that should and replace it with could. And so what that looks like is I should lose some weight. I should get a better paying job. I should really do my nails more often, look more presentable. I should dress up more. And that's not a very loving way to talk to yourself, whereas I could lose some weight. I could do it. I could make my health a priority. I could buy some fancy, beautiful clothes and make myself feel better. I could design a whole new website that allows my listeners to get the resources immediately with one or two clicks. It's just enough of a switch to get your brain to stop beating itself up and telling you all the ways you lack. Which brings me to number five. I want us to start cultivating limitless self-worth. Start seeking out limitless self-worth. What makes you feel worthy What makes you feel good? How can you really cultivate it? You know, create check boxes or get a habit tracker or look for ways you've already succeeded. Think of your past self, maybe a a time in your life where you were really down in the dumps, really in a dark place. And think of that person then and who you are now. If we're going to stop shooting on ourselves and comparing ourselves to other people, let's at least take that loving look and compare ourselves to ourselves. My bestie sent me something the other day that said, stop making comparisons. The only person you should be competing with is your past self, which shouldn't be too hard because you were a train wreck for a really long time. (laughs) And she's not wrong. Not wrong. I take full responsibility for that. There have been many times in my life where I was a giant train wreck. And that's why making self-care, making my sleep, my water, and my boundaries a priority and really focusing on loving myself has been such an incredible journey. That's why it's been so rewarding. And what I'm trying to tell you is there is a way to get from a place where you think of yourself as a piece of shit, a heel, doesn't deserve anything, it has no self-worth, bases your self-worth on your partner, your, your parents, your job, whatever, that the flip side of that is where you can break free from that and you can really start to see yourself differently and find your self-worth in what's already there. So whereas before I would like look at other people around me and see like my partner is a reflection of how worthy I am of love. My job is a is a, you know, physical manifestation of how worthy of a person I am. And when I decided, you know what, that's no longer fitting for me. I'm going to start determining my self-worth on how well I speak about myself. I'm going to start determining my self-worth on how good I feel about myself. I'm going to start determining my self-worth on how much time I take for me and how much I make self-care a priority. That's where my self-worth is, which ties beautifully into number six, which is start looking for what is right about you. You know, shift that really critical eye towards what's good about you. Now, I know it's hard, especially if you've been really mean to yourself your entire life your entire life. You know, you you can't just shut that voice off. It's been there your entire life. But instead, you can just get good at practicing seeing it. Just start seeing it. Every time you start thinking about what's wrong with you, what you could be doing better, I want you to immediately start thinking about what you're doing well. You know, I've got this journal that I use every day. I'm a huge journaler. Um, I participate in probably three or four different kinds of self-care programs. One is for weight loss, one is for my mental health, and one is for my entrepreneurship. And I journal like a madman 
because I want to collect the data on me. And I want to figure out what's working and what's not. And I'm able to do that now without a judgmental, critical eye. And I'm telling you, there is such a shift in what you see when you back away from being an asshole to your. 